Well hello everyone, this is the Mark Strat final presentation, Industry Antelope and Team Sea Lion. So our agenda for today, first is performance and results in the antelope industry, followed by lessons learned, and then marketing concepts learned, including product, price, and promotion. The performance and results for Team Sea Lion are Team Sea Lion is ranked number one in share price index at $5.6 million. Number one in volume market share, 61.3% for sunites, 90.4% for bodites. Number one in value market share, 46.5% sunites and 88.6% bodites. Number one in net contribution at $665 million. And the highest industry budget at $25.3 million. Continuing with the performance and results of the share price impact, Team Sea Lion ended the period eight with $5.6 million. And looking at the share price index evolution, we were roughly greater than three times the share price index of our next closest competitor, all of whom were below $2 million. So moving to the position among competitors in the Sonice market, we started off uh, the first few periods and then had a large gain in period two, ending the period eight at over 60%, which again was uh, three times higher than our nearest competitors. And in the Bodites market, we were the complete leader in uh, the first period, the first one to market at 100%. Moving on to brand performance in the antelope industry, our cumulative retail sales in the Sony market, we were a leader in with both the soft and solo products. Soft being the leader in Sabre segment with a share of 79%, and solo leader in the shoppers segment with a share of 69.3%. Moving on to the Bodite market, the top 15 brands, there were four brands of which we were the leader in first three. C B B is was a leader in innovators with a share of 46.9%. BT, a leader in the adopters segment with a share of 57.1%. And CUS, leader in the followers with a share of 77.1%. Now we'll turn it over to Yan for lessons learned. We have learned many lessons uh, through the Max uh, exercise. There are a few key things that have contributed to our success. First, it is critical to come up with a long-term strategy and plan right from the beginning and be proactive and will, uh, willing to predict the future and action on it. And that's like taking a risk. So for example, we are right from the beginning decided uh, in our Solonite market, our approach is to optimize the Solonite market. And then in the meantime, very early on, we determined that we'll go through the Bodai market by taking a loan and venture into and that market. And secondly, uh, we really use an R&D to uh, optimize our product based on the semantic scale ideals and also the trend. So we're trying to actually project ahead a bit of the production in terms of product optimization. Um, and then we, the, one of the key elements is to plan the production volume based on set of the information, such as the market uh, forecast, brand awareness, and purchase intentions, thematic scale ideals, current market share, and projected market share, and our pricing position. And so if we're giving an opportunity to go back to do this again, uh, we may have, uh, we may want to change a few things first. Uh, we probably will be a lot more aggressive in terms of production numbers when we're into a new market such as Mordai. Um, because the market forecast tends to be conservative when there's a new market. And then we probably will also like to use a little bit more R&D, 
not only on the ideal valuation alignment, but also to reduce our production costs. Uh, in addition, we probably would like to use the market study, such as the competitive information and experiment, to really optimize our control. And if we're able to do all of those, uh, we would expect that we'll have probably um, less of a, a loss of sales to either competitors or the potential just loss of sale opportunity. We probably will have more contribution after marketing as well as more earnings before tax. Um, so now I'll pass to Taylor for Market Concept Learn. Thank you. Okay, so now that we've reviewed the overall performance of our brands and discussed the takeaways of our simulation, we'll now start to think about uh, the concepts and how the simulation uh, brought new light on product, production, and pr uh, promotion and price. Um, so first and foremost, when we're thinking about our products, it's important to be able to segment the market and select your appropriate consumer segment. The consumer segment needs to be actionable, measurable, and substantial. Uh, and the way to assess that consumer segment is to really look at the current opportunity in terms of the, uh, the consumer size, um, but to also focus on what that trending data looks like and forecasting outward. Um, it also, in terms of your product, it's important to focus on the addressable market. Um, so in the scope of the simulation, we chose to focus on our addressable market with our solo and soft brands, rather than looking to compete in an additional, pro in an additional market. Um, looking to compete in an additional market without optimizing your current market, it's pretty costly um, to compete in those dual markets. That also comes to question as whether or not you want to be the follower or the leader in a consumer segment. And this can all be uh, supported through market research. Um, once you've understood your consumer segment, in terms of your product, the next step is then to align uh, to the ideal values. So in thinking about the cost benefit analysis of your consumer segment, it's not just the value of it, but there's also behavioral psychological impacts that come into play uh, when purchasing a product. So in order to align to your ideal values, the simulation has, brought, has shed light on the fact that this just simply takes time. Um, and in order to achieve those ideal values, it's important to, to decide whether to move forward with the analysis of semantics or the multidimensional market research. Um, as we saw in our previous uh, slide that Chris presented on, um, looking at our first initial periods, this was a trial and error time for us to better understand where the market was moving uh, in terms of its ideal values and it took a few R&D projects to get us there. In thinking about R&D, what we really wanted to focus on is how can we create R&D projects that are going to address our current ideal values and also anticipate future trends of our consumer segments, both within the Sonite and the Vodite markets. The final piece here when thinking about your product, and certainly with the simulation, um, the overall production volume methodology is extremely important to make sure that your product um, is addressing consumer growth. Um, so the analysis of your market forecast as well as your distribution panels can help you align with that. Um, but the most important thing here with production volume is to ensure that we're not overproducing and applying additional inventory costs to our company. Um, so now that I've talked about the, the main takeaways in terms of product, I'll turn it over to Ling to discuss our final market concepts. The market concept I'm going to talk about is price. We learned and applied the following four price strategies in simulation. The first one is to understand our customers. In the Sonite market, our customers are savers and shoppers who are price sensitive. While in the Vodite market, our customers are innovators and early adopters who are less price sensitive and more adventurous. Knowing what our customers' price expectation is really helpful to decide our product price properly. The second one is the premium strategy. We initially use this strategy in the market for innovators and early adopters 
who are willing to pay high prices for new products. And when we enter the water market, there's no other competitors. So this market situation is ideal for us to use a premium strategy. The third one is the penetration strategy. We use this strategy in the stonelight market for savers and shoppers who are price sensitive. We set our product price low to attract these customers away from our competitors in order to increase our market share and the sales volume. The last one is price optimization. This is an ongoing process where we regularly monitor and adjust our product price using the semantic skill studies to ensure our price are aligned with our target segment expectations. The next market concept is promotion. We have two main objectives for promotion, to achieve high brand awareness and high purchase intentions. We learned from the simulation that perceptual objectives are very important for brand promotion. Because the segment the ideal point is always moving, we are using perceptual objectives to bring our brand closer to the ideal point each period. Another important promotion strategy we learned from simulation is advertising. We feel like the following three items are very important for successful advertising. The first one is to have adequate budget. We spend a cumulative of 60 million advertising cost, almost double the expenditure of our competitors. The second one is to use the budget wisely while using two rules. Rule one, to allocate around 15% of the money on research. Rule two, to concentrate on the segment being targeted, not spread out. The last one is to advertise at the right stage, which we believe is at the product launch stage. Our promotion strategies yield good results. First, it's effectiveness. We achieved the high brand awareness for all our products. In Sonnet market, it's above 70% for all eight periods, while in the Vodite market, the brand awareness increased rapidly since we launched the product in period five. Our products also have medium purchase intentions. As you can see from the table, our product soft has a purchase intention of 71%, and the competitive product is only 17%, which is the highest. For solo, it's 66%, and the competitive product is 26%. For all the three products in the that market, the purchase intention are also very good. And the another good thing is we do not have competitive product in this market. The second one is it's efficient. We monitor the promotion cost to ensure we meet our goals with a very reasonable cost. That's the end of our presentation today. Overall, we did very good. We achieved our company goals and ranked number one in the antelope industry. We want to thank our team members. Without everyone's hard work and the dedications, we would not be able to achieve this. We also want to thank Professor for his guidance and the timely help whenever we had questions. So with what we learned and what we achieved, we are very confident and looking forward to execute our company's next five-year plan successfully. And again, thank you all.